It is one of the iconic images of World War II, a huge marble swastika being blown up by victorious American troops in April 1945. But what's the story behind the film? These days, internet privacy is a major concern to us all. All sorts of snoopers want to monitor and collect data about your online activities. NordVPN shields you from them. Internet service provider monitors the whole internet traffic that pours through its servers and stores logs of your online activity. Your data, such as financial information, interests and passwords and emails, might be valuable to third parties, hackers and even government. When you browse the internet using a VPN, your communications are encrypted, allowing you to stay private online. VPN also allows you to access content not normally available in your location and connect to hundreds of remote servers in different locations securely. Sign up today at nordvpn.com slash markfelton and enter the promo code markfelton to get 73% off a two-year plan and four months extra for free. Protect yourself online today with NordVPN. By the time U.S. forces approached the city of Nuremberg, or in English, Nuremberg, in mid-April 1945, they would be faced with capturing a heap of ruins. Once a beautiful medieval city, its unfortunate close association with the Nazis had caused it to be singled out for destruction. Nuremberg was an important cultural centre during imperial times, but Hitler used the city's historical associations to link it with his own vision of national power and world conquest, and it had played host to many major Nazi party rallies during Hitler's struggle to win power in Germany. The torch-lit rallies have become synonymous with our image of pre-war Nazism and were deliberately stage-managed spectacles, sending a powerful message to Germans and the wider world. After Hitler became Chancellor in 1933, he ordered architect Albert Speer to construct an enormous complex of buildings to be used for rallies, speeches and events, branding Nuremberg as the Reich Party Day's city. Between 1935 and 1937, a no-expenses-spared series of grandiose buildings were constructed just outside the city, chief among them the Zeppelinfeld Stadium. Constructed of brick and concrete, faced with slabs of shell limestone, it was modelled on the Pergamon altar in ancient Greece. It was called the Zeppelinfeld because many years before, in 1909, Count von Zeppelin had landed one of his amazing airships on the very spot. Here, Hitler gave speeches and reviewed parades from atop a lofty dais, and set high above him was an enormous marble swastika. The giant parades ended once war broke out in 1939, but Nuremberg hosted many Nazi Party events up to late in the war. The Allied aerial bombing campaign of Germany resulted in several raids being launched on Nuremberg by both the British and the Americans. As well as being a centre for Nazi ideological pomp and ceremony, Nuremberg was also an armaments production centre, making it a valid military target. But its association with Nazism was a major reason for the severity of the attacks which followed. Due to its location deep in southern Germany, the city was spared the worst raids until later in the war. The old city was full of half-timbered medieval houses and churches with a huge castle, ideal for an incendiary raid. The British completely destroyed the old city of Nuremberg on the night of the 2nd to 3rd of January 1945, when 521 heavy bombers dropped 6,000 high-explosive bombs and over 1 million incendiaries, killing 1,800 people and rendering 100,000 homeless. The historic heart of the city, the Old Town, was almost completely levelled, but ironically the Nazi Party rally grounds outside the city were hardly touched. US ground forces approached Nuremberg after the 15th of April 1945, the Germans having set up hasty defences under the Gauleiter of Franconia, Karl Holtz. Anti-aircraft guns were emplaced on the approaches to the city, backed up by some regular troops and Volkssturm militia. Order began to break down in Nuremberg, leading to the Nazis executing civilian dissenters and military deserters. 
Hitler had also ordered that all remaining essential services and power sources were to be destroyed as part of a scorched earth policy to try and slow the Americans down. But German officials actually disobeyed this insane order. German resistance was heavy, fanatical, but not coherent. The US 7th Army fought into Nuremberg from the east and northeast. By the end of the 16th of April, the suburbs had fallen, including the Zeppelinfeld and the other Nazi buildings. The Germans even managing to knock out one or two Sherman tanks within the stadium itself. The combat was intense and often room to room, the Germans firing Panzerfaust from the upper stories of buildings and US tanks and sniping with small arms. A proportion of the city's defenders were SS troops, formed into two battle groups, Kampfgruppe Der Nagel and 1st Battalion 38th SS Grenadier Regiment, plus a Luftwaffe battle group. Even police and fire officers fought as infantry in Volkssturm units. Nuremberg Castle proved a tough nut to crack. The watchtowers in particular became mini fortresses. One, the Laufer Tor, contained 125 German riflemen and only surrendered after being subjected to intense US machine gun, artillery and bazooka fire. The wider castle complex was bombarded at virtually point-blank range by an M12 assault gun and a breach made for US troops to storm through the huge wall. On the 20th of April 1945, which was, incidentally, Hitler's 56th birthday, the remaining German forces in the city centre actually launched a counter-attack, managing to push the Americans back in many places. But the attack soon fizzled out as US infantry, backed by tanks, made renewed assaults to recover their positions. Gauleiter Holtz continued to command the defence from the city centre until he was killed when his command post in the police station was stormed by US infantry, after the Americans had given him four opportunities to surrender. With Holtz dead, his second-in-command, Army Colonel Wolf, realised that further resistance was pointless and surrendered the shattered city. Final fighting was finished by the evening of the 20th of April. U.S. troops celebrated by raising the stars and stripes over Adolf Hitlerplatz, the main square in the city. The Americans hosted a large parade of troops fresh from the fighting, the event loaded with important symbolism. The Nazi Party rally grounds had been taken mostly intact and became a focus for the new occupiers. Two days after the city fell, General Alexander Patch, 7th Army commander, hosted a special ceremony at the Zeppelinfeld. The huge swastika had an equally enormous American flag hoisted up over it, and then an awards ceremony was held on the field, five US officers and men being awarded the Medal of Honor for their bravery during the intense fighting in Nuremberg. Then US troops passed Patch in review, accompanied by an army band, the entire event being captured by army cameramen for newsreels back home. The Germans were by this stage clearly defeated, and though the fighting would drag on until the 8th of May 1945 before Germany finally surrendered, the capture of the Nazis' special city and the rally grounds became symbolic of Allied victory over Germany and was celebrated as such. The decision was next taken to make a really dramatic statement, affirming US victory in Nuremberg and in southern Germany that the world could understand. It was to be as symbolic and memorable a spectacle as the raising of the stars and stripes atop Mount Surabachi on Iwo Jima. What better symbolism of victory than the public demolition of the symbol of the Nazi party, the swastika? All over Germany, the Allies were directing Germans to remove Nazi symbols and destroy them, even before the war had ended. It was a first stage in the gradual denazification of Germany that would take years to complete. Firstly, by removing or defacing the physical symbols of the former regime, and secondly, through the reprogramming of German minds through education about the Nazi period. The Americans decided to blow up the giant marble swastika atop the Zeppelin Feld, and on the 25th of April 1945, US Army engineers carefully laid 200 pounds of explosive charges on the monument. Before, movie cameras rolling, a plunger was depressed and the hated symbol erased from history in a blinding flash and a shower of debris. Interestingly, 
The Zeppelinfeld Stadium has proved to be harder to erase than the swastika that once adorned it. After the war, it was taken over by the U.S. occupation authorities as a sports field and used by the American school in Nuremberg for soccer and American football. It also hosted motorsports events and rock concerts. The Bavarian authorities demolished some of the buildings in the Nazi complex, and in 1967 the colonnades that flanked the central tower were blown up, allegedly because they were unsafe. The complex has been allowed to fall into a state of disrepair, though recently steps have been taken to neither destroy the stadium nor restore it, but instead preserve it as an important part of Nuremberg's difficult recent history. Up until recently, the building attracted over a quarter of a million tourists a year. As for the ancient city centre of Nuremberg, bombed and shelled to ruins in 1945, it has risen from the ashes and been sympathetically restored to how it once looked, unlike so many historic towns and cities in Germany. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.